Hello and welcome to season two of Stuck in the Mud, the podcast. In this season, I'm opening up some of the bigger themes from my book, Stuck in the Mud, Stories of Hope for When You're Stuck. If you're interested in the book, it is on general release. What I say to people is, look for the yellow boots. Now, in this season, I'm interviewing a bunch of different people in a way that I hope you'll find interesting. What we've done is chosen a theme, prepared four questions each for each other, and then taken it in turns to open up the conversation to see where we go. I hope that you enjoy all of these conversations, and I really hope to see you soon. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, this kind of uh, interview, which my friend Mark Triggs and I are going to be doing with each other. This is an interview about Stuck in the Mud. And if you have a copy, uh, which of course you might not, if you go three, four pages in, you'll find in the acknowledgements um, the name Mark Triggs. And uh, the reason why he's there is because Mark has been uh, a big part of getting this book into publishers and, uh, and, and into your hands. Now, officially speaking, he's not the editor, but he is one of the early editors. And so I thought it would be fun to get together with Mark on a Zoom and for us to ask each other questions about the book, to try and uh, give you a bit of an experience of how it's been for us putting this thing together. And, um, and so we don't know what we're gonna ask each other. I've got four questions for Mark. He's got four questions for me. And I hope that you enjoy this and that it kind of gives you a little bit of a revelation of what this whole thing's about, why it means something to us and why it might be something that you'd like to, um, to have yourself. So, Mark, let's take it in turns. Um, and uh, do you just want to uh, just introduce yourself? Where are you from? Um, and then we'll get into this. Uh, yeah, I'm Mark Triggs. Uh, I'm not an editor by trade. I've, I've been a journalist at one point and so on. I'm something of a wordsmith, but uh, probably I'm one of those many people out there who uh, has promised themselves on their bucket list that they will write a book one day and has never got round to it. So when John spoke to me and uh, we were just chatting and it happened to come out yeah. that he had written, written this book and uh, I thought, oh, it'd be nice to attach myself to that in some sort of way. I think you flatter me by saying a big part. I think um, the book is yours and yours alone, but I've been honoured and uh, mm. very, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's been an honour to actually share the journey with you. And it has mm. been quite a journey as well. Yeah. And I, for my sins, you say where I'm from, uh, planet Earth is about as, as specific as it gets. Okay. I was born down in the southeast, um, much to my uh, chagrin, but that is a, a fact, so I can't yeah. change that. Um, but I've been up in uh, Shropshire specifically for the past 30 years now. Um, mm. And uh, I worship at Bridgeville Baptist Church. Um, I'm one of the leaders there now as of fairly recently. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that probably well, does it. Well, well listen, you, you know, what, one, one of the things that I think is worth saying, and the reason why I say you're a significant part of it is that there was a particular point in the journey that maybe we'll get into with our questions where, where I was just about uh, ready to either ditch it or self-publish. And I remember one particular conversation where you said to me something along the lines of, if you choose to self-publish, I'm out. Um, and, um, and it really kind of gave me, uh, an encouragement that it was worth continuing with, with, a with, with a publisher, um, but also a bit of a kick up the butt that, um, that I shouldn't take your time for granted, but it was a big moment for me of, okay, I hear you. I'm listening. I'm going to do something about this. And okay, um, this, is, this is interesting. And just for anyone listening into this, we haven't rehearsed this or even talked about it, but at all in advance really so uh yeah uh, I'm, I'm interested and i i suspect as the guest kind of thing yeah um i get to ask the first question and mm -hmm. you've now firmed up Let's in my do mind it. what that is going to be yeah go ahead, um, do it but uh i i'm sure I'm, I'm sure i wouldn't have been that blunt i'm sure i wouldn't have been that blunt and uh i'm sure uh i wouldn't have said exactly those words but i'm glad that the meaning wasn't lost you know yeah. I was yeah. saying it in a in another way, but um, certainly for me, you know, having been involved before, say, a long time ago, I mm. worked for actually a print company 
mm. that um, had a, a sort of arm that became the bigger part of the business that was involved yep. in disseminating press releases and news and so on. Yeah. And so I remember, and, and when I trained as a journalist, I remember why the expressions about hot lead and leading out and, you know, the whole composition nature mm -hmm. of a newspaper. Um, and uh, it's, oh, I'm going to completely forget the point of what I was saying. Sorry, this is my nature. Um, <laughs> you were about to ask me yeah, a question. In, I think. In that, in that, well, I was, and I, I, I remember that, but the... the uh, expression that would be used about a self-publisher um, in the old world was that it was vanity publishing. Mm. You know, it could only be done then, now it's much more possible, but it could only be done then by somebody of, you know, significant wealth yeah. um, who could fund it. And, and a bit like going back to that bucket list thing, oh, I have a published book, you know, and mm. I published it myself because no publisher in their right mind would take it, if you see what I mean. So uh -huh. my feeling was always... If if a publisher is willing to take it, it shows that it's got merit and value, and you know yeah. it's been independently assessed. So my question for you okay. was: What was your worst part of the process, or what was your worst time in the process? And you've hinted at that maybe, but uh... yeah. So w without wanting to be too too negative, um, there was one particular uh, part of the process where we had been speaking to a publisher um, where f for one re reason or another, we got into uh, what had turned out to be perhaps a bit of a negative relationship. And I think that to be fair to the publisher, I think that perhaps we just didn't understand each other. Um, we didn't understand each other's hopes for the project. Um, and I don't think that we were being difficult. I actually don't think they were being particularly difficult, but we didn't understand each other. And um, again, not meaning to be disparaging about the publisher, but I didn't know whether what I'd written was any good. And so when the first publisher came along, who aren't a big international publisher, just a small publishing house in the, in the UK, I thought, well, I was lucky to get that, you know, so I'm fortunate to get that. So when that relationship broke down, I thought, well, I was lucky to get that. And that's why I was like, well, maybe I'll either self-publish this or just let it go. Because by that point, you know, this has been a three-year process, isn't it? Um, yeah. well, it was three years to the day since I started writing it, actually. But, um, right. you know, that was a good year in. And I thought, I can let this go. You know, I'd had fun writing it, but I thought, they're just words. I can let it go. And I felt really low about it for a little while. Um, I remember I put it down for a little bit. Um, and that was probably the worst moment before almost instantly it just completely turned around um, in, you know, after that conversation with you, you weren't that blunt, but that's the way I remember it. That's the storyteller in me. The storyteller in me is like, you know, I spoke to Mark and he pinned me against the wall and he was like, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm only joking, but, but yeah, so that was the worst part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, let, let me ask me, let me ask uh, my first question to you then. Um, and, um, and, and funnily enough, it's actually the same question, um, uh, <laughs> which, um, uh, which is which part of the, of the process did you find most challenging? Um, it, it was definitely around that same time. And we had a bit of this with Lion Hudson, who, you know, yeah. the book, launches on Friday with and who you and I are both let's say sporting advanced copies here in our hands yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um but where we um seem to be talking a different language mm. um, and I I my sense of my role in all of this was to ensure that your um, your baby, yeah. your, you know, your creation, your mm -hmm. purpose for writing this was honoured and was reflected in the finished mm. article, the yeah, finished yeah. product. And I felt we, that was where the different language or the disconnect yeah. was coming. Um, and you and I, you know, 
your time, the first time you've been published as an author, I've never been involved in getting a book published. Before. So we were the novices in this, and it was yeah. maybe a view on our side that we didn't understand mm. the language, the process, the the you know the the jargon of the publishing world and the book yeah. world and so on. And that was how we were missing. But it felt like to me, you know, um, that we were either insisting on this is really important and we'd like this to say, or we were returning something to its former glory. Yeah. Um, and it was then being stripped out again. And we were saying, no, no, you know, that for me was where it felt like we were taking, you know, one step forward and five steps back. Yes. And one step forward and five steps back. And I, I, the number of occasions on which I read through painstakingly every single word mm. and made a change for the fourth or fifth time that I had made previously, previously. without reference to a previous version. Yeah. So that for me definitely would be the, um, the most frustrating aspect of the process. Yeah. Yeah. And it yeah. was solved ultimately. And you've already got a, a, a indication of my failing memory but um, the lovely lady at Lion Hudson, who became effectively your account manager or whatever, yeah, yeah, like Lynn. spent Lynn, who spent time with you and I, understanding those frustrations and helping either be the translator or the, but yeah. getting those connections actually made, mm. so that it was no longer frustrating. And it was steps forward at each, yeah, at each iteration rather than going backwards again. So yeah. And it all, I, I know it's kind of, I know it's kind of a classic, it's a tale as old as time, but you know, it was a classic communication problem. The biggest problem of course, is that a publishing house have got so much to be getting on with that our, mm -hmm. our questions and our concerns were, were probably just so frustrating. And we were sat going, why is this a problem? But Lynn yeah. was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, should we, should we move on to the second question then? What's your next question for me? Okay, well, this uh, um, is a positive question. Okay. We're moving to positive territory, but it's perhaps an unfair question. It's a bit like asking you which of your three kids is your favourite, which, of course, no parent will ever answer. You know, I love them all equally, you know, but um, <laughs> what's your favourite part or aspect of the book? Oh, yeah. I, I think that my favorite chapter if you if i kind of turn it into my favorite chapter yeah my favorite chapter is probably one in the latter part of the book in the second part of the book um because the book's in two parts uh where i'm talking about um the um uh, it's it's called thankfulness the power of understanding that's probably my favorite chapter and um, that's probably the the chapter where I feel I felt most like things were really clicking and coming together because the ideas and the concepts of the book all all bundle forward through the narrative. Um, and in that chapter was probably the first time where I got to the end and I thought, oh wow, I, yeah. I'm I I think something's just clicked. And, and ultimately, I had to then go back through the book to make sure that that same, I don't know, gravitas, maybe that same power was coming through all of the other chapters. But that was the first time. I remember there was one particular line in that chapter, which um, someone asked me the other day, what was my favorite line? And my, my favorite line uh, in that chapter, I know exactly where, where, it, where it is, is until we're comfortable enough to outwardly proclaim that we've understood something enough to choose it, we're unlikely to be able to express any level of joy through it. Mm -hmm. And there was a moment there where I was like, oh, I need to make sure that the rest of the book feels the way I just felt then. Um, and that, um, that, was a, that was a big moment. Uh, the chapter's basically about um, the relationship I have with my I mean, she's my stepmom, but she's my she's my mum, and the the whole point is um, the relationship with her um, uh, framed next to the relationship that I didn't have with with my birth mum, who who died when I was very little, um, and it's about the realization of some of that stuff and how um, and 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 what that meant to me. But then ultimately, the chapter is about worship. It's about um, 
it's about worship to Jesus and it it weaves together I think really nicely cool Mm. your turn um here's a question for you then here's my here's my next question um is there a part of the book that you found particularly surprising um things that i said or things that you encountered because i didn't know this question was coming there were two <laughs> things that occur straight off yeah one actually plays to my next question but um obviously i first read it as a 10 chapter mm. book yeah um and during the course of the three years that we're talking about your dad edwin died mm. and he you know or that journey that you went on brings us to further chapters yeah. um, in the book that makes it a 12 chapter book and uh, I suppose therefore the transition of the book from where it was at mm. at that point which was <laughs> yeah I mean the the story of the title of the book would be quite interesting in and of itself I haven't got yeah. that as one of my questions but yeah. it moved it from something that was actually really interesting and very personal about mm. you and quite whimsical yeah. to something that was suddenly a lot more um, life and death, literally. Right, um, yeah. So that switch, I suppose, is perhaps as close as I'd get to an answer of the, you know, what was surprising about yeah. it. Um, the other aspect, I think, is just generally that um, it's difficult to feel that I don't know your family, down to even Hobie the dog. Yeah. Um, you know, because it is intensely personal, which is very much my style and why I've enjoyed yeah. it. And, you know, in for, as a form of evangelism, if this yeah. is to be an evangelistic tool in any shape or form, the sharing of personal experience, good, mm. bad, and ugly, yeah. is consistent with my style of evangelism yeah so it didn't surprise me as such mm-hmm. about you but i think people might be surprised about the honesty and the openness and the you know the the, the personal detail yeah. that we get yeah i mean i only have one you. it's funny i only have one mode to be honest with you i don't know how yeah. to switch i don't know how to switch off i couldn't um you know i couldn't i couldn't do it in any other way I'd probably be a better yeah. writer if I could, but... Uh, <laughs> well, but um, I suspect it's, it's a thoroughly modern way because with social media, we are sort of, A, we're complete holistic individuals, yeah. hopefully. I'm not talking mm. about the Botoxing the lips and the, you know, mm. only presenting a, a, a sort of airbrushed image or whatever. But, but you know, your role in BYSP and Catalyst and at all nations church and as an author and as a worship leader sometimes not in 2021 yeah. you know they're all facets of your character so it's it's difficult to separate out i no. think and you know that's the way i lead life as well i am who i am warts yeah. and all whether i'm you know consulting for a client or whether i'm a church leader or whether i'm on the golf yeah. course you know so. Mm. um so right. my third question which i've heard into that is that the book yep. is dedicated to your dad edwin um what how did that you know how did that feel what did that what did that do for you i've described it from my side with the 10 chapters going to 12 and this mm. whimsical and you know very nice but slightly okay i can take it or leave it if you sort of mean yeah, yeah, Suddenly yeah. It's becoming life and death how was that for you in that three year process, suddenly something very, you know, seismic in your life came yeah. to pass that you wouldn't have chosen to, you know? Mm. Um, I mean, that's a hard question to answer. I, I felt very nervous about, about dedicating it to my dad, um, partly because I've got, um, I've got siblings and, you know, I don't have, I don't have the, um, you know, the single track on, bereavement you know and so I felt you know maybe I didn't quite have the right to do that you know I struggled in a sense to know what to write and how to write about dad but I have to be honest 
I wrote the chapters about my dad, um, like, I mean, in a completely different frame of mind. I was, I was still only, I don't know. I mean, maybe weeks since he'd passed away. And um, I mean, it's been, I mean, it'll be two years this, um, uh, you know, c coming up in, in the spring, but, um, you know, it's still very much, a f I, I, anyone who's lost anybody, let alone a parent knows it, it stays with you. And I've been really surprised with how much it stayed with me. Um, the thing that I think is, um, is, is perhaps most interesting about those chapters is that the previous 10 chapters, I could tell you pretty much the order of, of every story of the biblical story and everything, but I threw the words in those two extra chapters. Um, uh, I threw them on the page um, with some passion, anger, <laughs> um, frustration, and I and I haven't reread them. So um, I, um, I I'm I'm somewhat. I will read them again, but I couldn't tell you exactly what I wrote because in the frame of mind I was in, um, they, they came out of a completely different place. Now, I don't think that they stick out. I think that they, I think that they fit nicely. Um, and, you know, one thing for, for you guys listening, um, uh, it, one thing to know is that the book is in two halves. Um, so uh, it goes uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, or, you know, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, you know, it, it does that. So the first extra chapter is actually chapter six. And then the second extra chapter is the last one. Um, what's really funny about them though, is, and I say that I couldn't tell you what's in them. I, of course, I have a, some idea of what I wrote, but um, now looking at the book, I've got a real strong sense that the book would never have been finished without them. Real strong sense, thematically, um, a very strong sense, and I and I feel sad about that as well because um, I, I want I I wanted it to be a good book with my dad here, not not a potentially better book without him. That's ridiculous. Um, yeah. But there is sadness in all of it, and you know it's all significant and difficult. Um, uh, but ultimately, I think. Uh, if I never write anything else again, which I am, but if I, you know, if I never pl publish anything else again, I'm happy with this. I'm good. Um, it says everything I, I'd hoped that it would say. And it's a, you know, I talk about this quite a lot in other, in other sort of um, questions and interviews I've been doing. This is very much a love letter to people who've been through anything that's talked about in the book. You know, it's yeah. a very personal, um, uh, very kind of important thing there. So, yeah. Mm. Mm. That was a good question, Mark. <laughs> um, sh shall I go on to my next one? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's funny, we've had very similar. I wonder whether our last question is going to be similar as well. My, my question You've still got to one you... in advance of that. Say again? Yeah. You've still got one in advance of that. You've still got two left, haven't you? I've still got two left, but I wonder whether the last, last one will be the same because this one's very similar. So um, this one, a little bit different. What's your favourite story in the book? Um... I suspect it's probably the one about the ring-shaped mark oh yes. yeah okay and that's the good assembly and so on i, I mm, that's wrong in terms of a story yeah no because that's story, not because that's not the main meat of the story but it's no, interesting it's that that stuck with you yeah yeah so in terms of a message the, the the most powerful message about god and his love for me and my position in mark um, in terms of my favourite story of family Proctor and, you know, they're, they're yeah, rambling yeah. around the Shropshire countryside sort of thing, um, it would definitely be the walk with um, Hobie fetching you because your son had, um, you know... Yeah, he rounds, so, uh, he rounds up Samuel on a field. Yes. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. it. 
Mm. So that would be my favourite story as a glimpse into the life of the Proctor family, you know, but... Um, yeah. Oh, well, that's lovely. I like the fact that you like that story. Um, and I also like the fact that the thing that came to mind there was the ring thing. Um, yeah. um, I'm just going to... I'm not going to qualify that for, for people who... Um, oh, it's just a little tease for people. It's a little tease. It? Those are two things to look out for. I I actually think they're very important moments as well. Um, Hobie rounding up Samuel uh, is one of my favourites. And then the ring thing, absolutely. You know, the biggest problem with the ring story was how to turn it into a narrative for a book because it's something that I speak um, and it's and it's a very visual thing that I yeah, say. it's totally a very um, visual assembly. Yeah, yeah. But I'm going to leave. I'll 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 leave that. That's good. Okay. I'm going to chuck out another little, you know, tempter for anyone who's listened this this far in or whatever yeah. is um, you and uh, going over the blog as well. But um, you know. Oh my just, word! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's there's right. plenty. If, if if you want to hear of an author, you know, sort of messing up, not not in his authorship, <laughs> not in his writing, but uh, in in his you know, being a cool dad and all the rest, then uh, you know, this book's for you. That's right. That's right. But stories of hope for when you're stuck, you know. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Breaking your son's collarbone is um is yeah. a, is is a is pretty good. Um, yeah. Um. Okay. So this is your last question, isn't it? And it has to be. It has to be. I I am looking at um. I presume the very bookcase that you know kicks off the entire uh, book. Yep. Uh, behind you, and I can't see your copy of Suck on the Mud there. You know, Suck in the Mud there, but. Um, my inevitable last question has to be, what's next? Oh, wow. <laughs> that's a que that's not a question I thought you were going to ask. Um, oh, okay. Okay, well, no, that's fair. That's fair. I'll, I'll answer it. That's fine. So um, there's two more books in the works at the moment. Um, the first one's a children's novel. Um, I say children's novel. I mean a young reader novel, um, which is called Hikaru. Um that book's quite far along, actually. It's been to a, uh, a an editor. Um, uh, there's a lot of artwork in that book, and uh, we've been working through that art for probably 18 months now. Um, um, that's a really exciting um, uh, adventure, multi-dimensional adventure novel about um, these um, wonderful characters that mirror... Um, the biblical narrative. So it's very much an evangelistic um, book, hopefully really exciting. It's called Hikaru, Name Above All Names. Um, so that's next, I hope. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and um, uh, the, the next next is, um, is a follow-up to Stuck in the Mud. So uh, I'm working on that at the moment. I'm about a third of the way through that at the moment. Um, and uh, and we'll see what happens with that. So so yeah, that'll be really good. But yeah, the next project is something very different, um, and I hope that that'll be just as enjoyable to to work on through the next year or two. Um, but books take so long. Goodness knows how long that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna take. Yeah, that, that that threw me for a loop. I didn't think you were gonna ask about those. Um, it's okay. very different to your last question. That's very, di this is the one question where we've diverged completely. So my question to you, my last question is, who do you think this book is for or who would you give the book to? Um, okay, that actually, this is the easiest one of all in the sense that I, you know, have 10 copies off you already. Yeah. Um, and I have names against six of those mm -hmm. of precisely where they're going. And the majority of them are, you know, um, Christians, but I've got people on my list who are not Christians, who are just good mates, mm. um, who my Christ, you know, my Christian faith and their lack thereof, um, doesn't get in the way of our friendship at all and yeah. our friendship still goes out and they know that I do what I do and they're always interested if I'm yeah, yeah. leading or preaching they tend to tune into those services because of the personal connection of course. rather than because of the um the faith that they you know hold but I think it will help them um understand better the God that I know mm. and the God that I know 
I see very, very, I, I see in greater technicolor and greater detail and great with greater understanding probably through reading this book mm. than before I did. I think it's for everyone yeah. who cares about relationship, yeah. whether Christian or not, mm. and whether and 93 or 10 years old, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it, it's certainly readable by anyone from the age of seven, I'd say, onwards. <laughs> Up, up I'll take that as a compliment. And yeah. and let me, and let me just say then, because we've alluded to it a couple of times, this is something that you're going to find in the book. Um, God's um got this mark on him um which shows that you belong. And um the thing about my wedding ring, the thing that we're talking about here is that whether I take my ring off or leave it on, there is a callus there which shows that it belongs there. And there is a mark on God that shows that you belong with him, whether um, you're with him or not. Um, and there's something about um, uh, peace and the location of uh, delight and joy in that, which I hope you find encouraging. Mark, thank you so much. Uh, this has been brilliant. I've loved it. Um, I'm going to say that we probably used the good people's time enough. And I've really enjoyed talking yes. to you. So thank you so much. And if you are interested in getting the book, it's available. Um, well, it's available pretty much from anywhere. I did find out this week that in April, um, uh, the U S copy is going to be released, but I believe in the U S you can get a copy internationally. So that shouldn't cause you too much problem, but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Cheers.